Andy. Oh, there uh, you are. Have, have a great listen. trip, Andy. And yeah, have a safe journey. Yeah, we won't be here. For, yeah, we're leaving a week from a week from right now. So. Oh, wow. it's so nice. great. So great. Yeah, so it's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll be missing services for a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, you can Take always lots of pictures. You know. It's on Zoom. You can always log in. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be like it's three in the morning. <laughs> well, have, as we said, have a safe journey. And I'm safe, glad that we trip. put you up with Karen Barsman. But except she said that you knew everything already. Not, not yes. everything, but no, we printed out a now, but we, we have been to one of the restaurants you recommended before, yeah. Well, when it come and, and that margarita I saw. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you going to Rome? Uh, Florence. Oh, oh Florence. I've been to Florence, Venice, and Rome, but I'd love to go back and go to the Alps or go to some small towns or I can just see you skiing there, Diana. I don't know about <laughs> I haven't skied since high school, but just to like see some small towns or be on the coast or you know. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Thank you. Sam. I haven't been to Europe since high uh, since college, so it's been a while. I'd love to go back. <laughs> Twenty-eight. Can you hear me well? Reasonably well? Not at all? Here, let me let me clip this a little closer. Page 128. Uh, second song from the top. Maya Fehayom. Maya Yikes! 
Lovely it is to be here on Shabbat because as I was kind of rudely reminded, we had a short week. I don't know if you remember that this was actually a short week because it did not feel that way for so many. I know I especially did not feel like we had a short week because it started with such difficulty, such terror. From this bima, we love a, a poet named Alden Salavi. And as a reform Jewish poet, he has a really beautiful way of putting ritual into poetry and into prayer. Yet, he seems to be called upon to put more and more and more moments of tragedy into written prayer. And again, this week, we turn to Alden Salavi in a prayer in our time, in our time of hurt. As we... So Alden Salavi, outside of being such a beautiful poet, is also a, a resident or grew up in Highland Park. And we have his prayer here to begin our Shabbat prayers together. Source and creator, grant a perfect rest under your tabernacle of peace to the victims of terror, those whose lives were cut off again by witless aggression. Today, we add Highland Park to the list of places where innocents have been murdered and wounded. Adonai, our God, remember with love the survivors of these horrors. Grant them shelter and solace, comfort and consolation, blessing and renewal. Grant them endurance to survive, strength to rebuild, faith to mourn, courage to heal, and devotion to each other. O oh, heavenly guide, guide our hand of love and of shelter. Grant the victims of terror your protection, your wholeness, your healing, and especially your peace. As we are all those conduits of wholeness and of healing, the conduits of, of God's peace. We are the ones who help to bring that peace into the world. And we do that by, by being together in community like we are tonight. And to, tonight our, our community is a, a, little bit, a little bit more full because some of our community was often in another country. As, the Temple Sholem Israel trip uh, just got back from their uh, about 10 day or 11 day, if you uh, had plane problems. Um, it, uh, and so we get to welcome a number of those who are there back. Uh, to Temple Shoal. So I'm going to invite up Eddie and David, Mark and Bill and Helene uh, and Jeffrey uh, to join us on the Bima to help light the Shabbat candles and bring in the sweetness of Shabbat with the Kiddush. We are all going to be on page 120 for the lighting of the Shabbat candles. Thank you. 
And Ethan and Hannah, I hear you were coincidentally in, in Israel too. So we're going to invite you up too. <laughs> Not on the same trip, but just being in Israel is so important. So on page 120. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher yidishanu v'mitzvotav v'tzivanu lehadlik ner, lehadlik ner. Shel Amen. Amen. And actually, I'll invite you as a whole group to shift over here uh, for our Kiddush prayer, which can be found on page 123 as we all rise in body or in spirit. This is not Join the Someone, yeah, get, yeah, get closer. <laughs> Come on, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Borei Peri Hagafen Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kiddushanu B'Mitzvotah Veratzavanu Veshavat Kodesho Veahava Uvratzon Hinchilanu Zikaron Lemase Vereshit Ki Hu Yom Tefila Lemikra Ekodesh Zecher Litziat Mitzrayim Kivanu vacharta veotanu kidashta mikol hamim veshabat kochcha veahava uvratzon inchaltanu baruchat Adonai. Amen. We're so happy that you all made it back safe and sound, even if it took an extra day or so. Uh, and we are so happy that you uh, found that beautiful community in Israel, you saw the beautiful sights, you came back with that little bit of extra Israel glow, and also maybe a little of that extra like Negev tan. But we are so, so happy to have you all back. Thank you. We are gonna turn in our seat door, continuing, we can have a seat, continuing to welcome back into our space. But in this case, for the words of the Chadodi, we welcome back in that Sabbath love, that Shabbat Ahava into our space as if we were at a wedding. And so we are doing verses, we're on the Chadodi doing verses one, two, five, and nine. Um, La 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 Ha, 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 ha. 
شمار به زخار به دیور خد ایش میان الهم یور خد ادنای خد شما Shabbat Lechuven Elcha Ki Mekor Avracha Merosh Mikedem Nesucha Sof Maaseh Machshava Tehila We rise, we, 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 we rise and face the entrance. On page 145, at the bottom, middle of the page, a reading translation of the words Lamdani, which I've just been feeling are so beautiful for this moment especially. So let us pray together in the English. Teach me, O oh God, a blessing, a prayer, on the mystery of a withered leaf, on ripened fruit so fair, on the freedom to see, to sense, to breathe, to know, to hope, to despair. Teach my lips a blessing, a hymn of praise, as each morning and night you renew your days. Lest my day be today as the one before, lest routine set my ways. On the next page are words of the Baruch Hu. Lai, 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 l
Page one, page, page, page one fifty two. seated as we turn to the instruction manual of the Shema, the Ve'ahavta on page 154. <speaking in Hebrew> Ooh, <laughs> Ani Adonai Eloichem Asher hutseiti etchem Meeres mitraim Liot lachem Lelohim Ani Adonai Eloichem Free you can listen to the words or the words of our Iyun before Miechamocha are on page 241 if you just hold your finger uh, where we are. The good in us will win over all the wickedness, over all the wrongs that we have done. We will look back on the pages of written history and be amazed. And then we will laugh and we will sing. And the good that is in us, the children in their cradles, will have won. Our hearts beat with certainty that there is a day and an hour and a mountain called Zion. And that all of the suffering will gather there and become song ringing out into every corner of the earth from end to end, and the nations will hear it like the caravans in the desert will all to that morning throng. We sing together that words of praise on page 158. Bye bye. 
We turn to the next page as our prayer for the evening. our prayer service with Ma Yafe Hayom. How good it is to be together on this day, on Shabbat, a time where we may not have seen each other for a week. Hopefully it wasn't more than that. But even as our world gets torn apart, put back together again, torn apart, put back together again, over and over And even just that one single week, we always know we can look forward to the celebration of Shabbat. We celebrate that on the next page, 162. page 164 and following on the even pages we rise in body or in spirit
As an invit as 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 an invitation to our silent prayer on page one there we are on page 165 it began our prayer with pray as if everything depended on god act as if everything depended on you we take those words as we enter silent prayer whether it be the words on our hearts the words on the pages or a moment of silence in the midst of a busy and hectic week when you feel ready you may be seated
Abraham Yitak Yaakov Sarah Rivka Rachel Valea Hu Yivarech Et Haholim Blank. May the one who bless our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless blank. Our Sidor says names. I don't know all of the names of everyone who lives in Highland Park, everyone who lives in the Chicagoland area, everyone who lives in any of the places that have been touched by gun violence. I don't know what to put there. I do know that there is a lot of healing to be done, a lot of work that that healing calls us to do. And we also especially think about those who are, who are working hard themselves to feel better, to be better, to feel a little bit more average even. It might be those working on a physical ailment, that work of physical therapy, if you know it, you know how difficult it can be those working on a mental or an emotional ailment, those who are working through recovery in any type of way, and those who are in spiritual despair. And we bring communities to mind as well. If there are any of those of our loved ones, our friends, our family, those who are in need of that blessing of Rafu Ashlema, that full and complete healing, I invite you to share their name aloud with the community. And at the same time, we'll see names submitted by our community that's joining on Zoom. The words of Misha Berach uh, can be found on page 371 in the middle. Before 
us, help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing, and let us say Amen. Mekor habracha lavoteinu. Bless those in need of healing with refuah shlema. The renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let. I spent, I spent my last couple of days at a faraway conference, all the way down at McCormick Place. I was at a restorative justice conference uh, by the National Association for Community and Restorative Justice. Restorative justice has for a long time been a focus of the social justice work that we at Temple Sholem do through Sholem Justice. Restorative justice, if you're not aware, can come in many forms, but its primary way is working in a circle. In a circle, a very democratic way to sit together. And when it's in, say, a classroom, it is a time for everyone to have a voice. And there's a lot that goes into just a circle. You, there's a lot of ground rules, a lot of expectations, a, a talking piece. Everyone has something personal that they kind of put in the middle of the circle so that everyone is represented in the circle. And there's, there's a lot of, of ways to do this. In the criminal justice system, Restorative justice looks in different ways as well, where the, we actually have in Chicago three restorative justice courts, where for lower level offenses, a, a, a person could go to a restorative justice court and over a number of months, they would be in circle with the person they committed the offense against because healing needs to happen. Not only healing about for the person who uh, had an act perpetrated against them, healing needs to happen in a community and healing especially needs to happen for the person who committed the offense. And so bringing those people and the, and the community into circle, talking, really openly about the effects of how that action affected everyone in that circle is a profound way to interrupt violence. But in all of those ways to set up a circle, I was thinking about the term in education of scaffolding. If you don't know, my wife is a, a fourth grade teacher and scaffolding is a big part of, of her progressive educational ways. It refers to a method where teachers or anyone who is guiding offers a particular kind of support to students as they learn and develop a new concept or skill, right? And we all know this intuitively. Like you can't learn uh, multiplication without knowing addition. Like, what is four times two? Well, that's four plus four. You have to have all of the scaffolding in place to learn anything new. Because in progressive education, it's not the teacher saying, here's how this works. 
but rather letting the students uh, experience and figure it out for themselves and understand truly how multiplication works. And for so many of us uh, from, from other generations, we were told how multiplication works. And now the idea of encouraging students to explore it and understand it through scaffolding, which gives them the opportunity to explore, but know that, that they're supported. Just like a building that is, that is being built with scaffolding around it. I mean, a building could be built without scaffolding, but it would be rather dangerous for the workers. The scaffolding allows that feeling of safety as you move forward or as you move up. I was especially thinking about this uh, last Sunday uh, when I have two uh, members of our Temple Sholem community who were looking for a, a new way to continue to engage in Judaism, but on their own time and in their own learning. So I set them up as a chavruta. Chavruta is that literally ancient way in Judaism of learning together, of two people in a zug, in, in pairs, learning together. And so they're, they're going to meet every week on Zoom to study Talmud, doing probably just like a few paragraphs at a time. But for their first meeting, I met on Zoom with them. And here's how Talmud works. Here are the people that are talking in Talmud. Here is how they talk. Here's the language that they're using as they're talking. Here's how to understand how this is all put together. And then I let them go. But I gave them the tools of how to find the information they need next time they need it, because they will. It is very complicated. But that safety net that they have, that they know they can figure it out on their own, is so important, just like our social safety nets. No matter what, you know that you're not going to fall all the way down. There is something to help you. You have tools to help yourself. We rarely acknowledge safety nets until we really need them. And in this week's Torah portion, the Israelites' safety net is aggressively yanked out from underneath them. The Avau B'nai Israel Kol Ha'ida, the Israelites arrived at the body in the wilderness at at Zin, a place on their journey. V'tamat sham Miriam, v'tikber sham. And Miriam died there and was buried there. That's it. That's all we get. We have no knowledge about the mourning ritual. We have no knowledge about how she died, about what she went through. Nothing. Miriam died there and was buried there. The very next line, Velo haya mayim. The community was without water. Wait a second. Was, was there a mistake? Because Miriam is really close to mayim. There's just a race missing. Could it have been that and the community was without Miriam? Well, the very next part says that the people rose up and complained or quarreled against Moses and Aaron. So I, unless Moses and Aaron like offed Moses' sister, I don't think that, that they were quarreling against Moses and Aaron because Miriam was gone, but rather they're, they're upset because they don't have water. Why don't they have water? Why do all of a sudden they not have water? The most famous 11th century commentator Rashi writes, since this statement of the people were without water follows immediately after the mention of Miriam's death, we learn that it was during the entire 40 years that they had a well of water that followed them 
because of Miriam's merit. And what was Miriam's merit? We go ahead 300 years to a 14th century commentator, Rabbi Nubachia, who writes, the water which the people had enjoyed all these years was due to the merit of Miriam because she stood by watching what would happen to her infant brother when he was in a basket in the reeds at the edge of the river Nile. God had rewarded her for the act of kindness by making her the provider of water for Moses' people. The people had not appreciated this until the well ceased with water upon Miriam's death. Their safety net, their scaffolding, that which had allowed them the strength to keep going forward, the confidence that no matter what they had, water was all of a sudden gone. And knowing this people who we're often told are a stiff necked people, I'm pretty sure they didn't appreciate it till it was gone. But how did they feel? They felt lost. They felt full of despair. How do we go forward? They immediately call out to Moses. Let's go back. Like, why did you bring us out of Egypt, that terrible, wretched place where we were slaves? to die in the wilderness. And this is a trope that we have heard over and over again. They fell back into their ways. They joined in complaining against Moses and Aaron. Whereas they have physically moved forward year after year since leaving Egypt. I mean, they thought they were moving forward. They physically did. But it reminded me of a quote by James Baldwin, who wrote, the true horror is that America changes all the time, but without ever changing at all. America changes all the time without ever changing at all. The Israelites thought they were moving forward. They thought they were changing all the time, but here they are with the same experience they have had over and over again. Why did you take us out of Egypt just for us to die here? I think we're feeling a, a similar repetitive way for what's changing and is not really changing for feels like week after week after week. We are in despair at the most recent mass shooting the most recent gun violence, and we're coded in despair. And this one, this one especially touched us. Highland Park, our neighbors, our friend, our Chicagoland community, and especially touching our Jewish community as well. We thought we were moving forward, yet we find ourselves in that same situation over and over and it does not have to be this way. We don't have to cry and despair for a week about Buffalo and then cry and despair for a week about Valde, cry and despair for a week about Highland Park or whatever is coming next week. Just shifting from shooting to shooting. Now, while the Israelites' regular complaining is not often a model for good society, in this case, maybe it is. They experience something difficult, something that is affecting them deeply. And what do they do? They go straight to the top. They go straight to their leaders, literally their representatives, their representatives to God. They make their voice heard. They hold Moses accountable for their experiences, for their difficulty. Moses, as their leader, is responsible for their safety, for keeping them alive, and he is not holding up his end of the bargain. Maybe it's our turn to rise up and complain, maybe not to Moses and Aaron, but to our representatives, those who will listen to us 
It's our turn to call out until something is done, until change truly happens. We must dig in our own wells. We don't have Miriam's well there helping to parch, helping our parched throats, helping us to move forward. We have to dig in our own wells, demanding action just like the Israelites did. And in that well, in each of ours, when we dig in, we're surely going to find both that anger that demands change as well as a well of comfort. In this past week, many of us have tried to sustain and comfort those who are suffering after the shooting in Highland Park. We've attempted, tried our best to be wells of comfort to our households, to our friends, to our Chicagoland community. Well of comfort, affirming life, even as we grieve. And sometimes it doesn't feel like our wells are deep enough, deep enough to water so many weary souls. We need Miriam, we need her well. We need each other's wells to help us continue this good work. May we continue to use those muscles, to use those muscles of cranking that bucket all the way down the well and then all the way back up to the surface. May we use those muscles to bring up that goodness, that comfort that those wells bring, that help for each one of us, ourselves first and our communities as well. Because the more we do it, the stronger we will be, the more strength we have to call out to our Moses and our Aaron's that we demand change. Our communities depend on it. Shabbat Shalom. I, I miss the rest of my clergy team. I have most fantastic Cantor Katzman, who, I mean, I don't know how you're so exhausted because you're over at the hospital being a chaplain all week and then coming here and singing, your voice must be tired. My voice is the only thing that isn't tired. But. <laughs> As, as, uh, as Rabbi Conover's out in, still in Israel, uh, Cantor Ben David is in Maine, and Rabbi Singer's on the other coast in Seattle. There is, uh, there's, there's, we're all over the place right now, and I, I can't wait till we're all back. That's why I'm thinking about August, especially when there's a lot going on in our Temple Shalom community, especially a lot of open house events for each and every one of our um, community groups, especially in that month of August, we'll be gathering once again to really kick off the new year. Uh, and, and there's a lot, there's a lot to look forward to. And in the next week, there's also some great things to look forward to um, as we have a new task force. After uh, the overturning of Roe versus Wade, members of Women of Temple Sholem, uh, as well as Sholem Justice and Makom, Makom is our 20s, 30s group, have all come together uh, support, with support of our clergy to begin planning our response and the ways the Temple Sholem can be a part of supporting so many people who are working 
to to have fairness and justice in reproductive rights. Um, and uh, one of the most beautiful things is uh, this task force has reached out to a number of our neighboring states uh, whose laws are unlike Illinois um, to see how we can help. And so we're collecting responses, seeing how we can be of help um, and uh, going to be gathering together in August as well to help work on that. If you're interested in that work, um, please email me and I'd love to connect you. And then talking about Macomb, Macomb has just taken over our announcements. Um, Macomb, our 20s, 30s group, uh, next Friday, yeah, July 15th, is having Shabbat on the beach, uh, gathering uh, near the Waveland picnic field, uh, enjoying snacks and drinks, and a warm, creative Shabbat, and a dinner from Portillo's. That sounds fantastic. Uh, and the day after that, um, Macomb has been doing a Tough Stuff Brunch Club, gathering together over food to talk about difficult topics. And uh, Saturday, July 16th, joining together um, to talk about anti-Semitism and how it shows up for us. And also next week, we'll be right here. We'll be right here, being together, praying together, being in community all together. We're going to turn back in our Sidorim, in our prayer books, to page 586 for the words of Aleinu L'Shabeach at the bottom, the bottom of the page as we rise. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon ha'kol L'atet gedula liot ser v'reshit Shelo asanu k'goye ha'ratzot Velo samanu k'mishpechot ha'adama Shelo sam chelkenu ha'em V'gor aleinu k'chol ha'monam Ba'anachnu koreim, u'mishtachavim u'modim, lifnei melech malachei ha'melachim, ha'kadosh baruch hu. V'nemar v'haya Adonai l'melech al kol ha'aretz b'yom ha'hu, b'yom ha'hu yeyeh Adonai echad u'shemo, u'shemo, u'shemo We may be seated. As I shared that Rabbi Conover, who was leading our trip to Israel, um, has continued to stay in Israel as she joins at the, the Sholem Hartman Institute, uh, an incredible opportunity uh, for study. Um, she has uh, graced us with a video to help us, um, uh, to address us, to, and help us transition into the mourner's cottage. So if technology all works, we should be able to hear her. Shabbat Shalom. It's tough to be away when things are yes. difficult. For so long, our people's souls yearn to be in Jerusalem, but now that I'm here in Jerusalem, I yearn to be with you. Uh, Israel and Jerusalem in particular, it's a place that's just filled in different places on streets and on hillsides. These signs that say Yiskor, and then they have names listed under them. In other places, it has Pe Nun standing for Po Naflu, here fell, and again, listing the names of people who died, in both cases, people who died in terror attacks. I never thought that our Highland Park would be a place where a Yiskor sign would need to be there as a place marker. Say on Monday, as more and more of the horrors of that July 4th were revealing themselves, one in the Oh, 
hopefully we come back. I want to so deeply appreciate Stacey Charney as she works on all this. Place marker. Say on Monday, as more and more of the horrors of that July 4th were revealing themselves, one and then another and then another Facebook post populated in my feed. And it was of that picture of that beautiful little boy, two years old with curly hair, awkwardly in a stranger's arm with the caption, do you know this child? He was separated from his parents at the parade. And I looked um, as the night wore on a little bit more and more my night in Jerusalem. As it wore on, I, I looked and I saw some of the comments. In fact, when I went to bed, I thought I saw a comment that said, I think he's been reunited with his parents. But of course, we all found out later that he was not, that this child, Aiden, his parents, Irina and Kevin McCarthy had died in the shooting. I think about what hope Irina and Kevin had when they named their child Aiden, their own little gone Aiden, their garden of Eden. And the fact that his parents died protecting him. Witnesses at the parade say that Aiden emerged from under his father's loving bodily shield. Kevin and Irina McCarthy died protecting Aiden and their action gives us a sacred charge. We must now all become the protectors of Aiden. And not just this little boy, Aiden, but the Aiden from which his name comes. In the book of Genesis, we read, Venahar Yotze Me Aiden, Lashkot et Hagan. A river issues from Eden to water the garden. We must protect a vision of Eden, of gone Aiden from where with our help an abundant river bursts forth, nourishing the garden of our world with mutual concern and hope and righteousness that would extinguish the forces of hate and hopelessness and terror. So may we live up to our sacred responsibility to be partners with one another and tilling God's garden of our world, irrigating it with divine peace. Little Aiden and those who were murdered in the terror attack in Highland Park, Catherine, Katie Goldstein, Stephen Strauss, Jacqueline, Jackie Sundheim, Nicolas Toledo Zaragoza, Eduardo Avaldo, Irina McCarthy, and Kevin McCarthy deserve at least this from all of us. Shabbat Shalom and much love from Jerusalem. We continue to add to the, that list of memory, those of our Temple Sholem community who have passed away in the last 30 days, Frida Cohen Kowalski, Andrea Maester Levin, Fern Bomchel Davis, Dorothy Nagler, Jim Ryan, Marcus Mares, and Norma Adler, and those whose yard sites are observed in this week now ending, Arthur Bear, Paul Bell, Ralph Billingham, Lorraine Blumberg, Columbus Chambers Jr., Jeremy Cohen, Arthur Copeland, Thelma Davis, Anne Englander, Margaret Blaustein Feldman, Mel Frankel, Levi Galperin, Esther Gasparetti, Seal Gelman, Paul Goldman, Barry Jerome Hoberman, Carol Hockman, Saul Eifergen, Gilbert Katz, Dr. Lewis Keith, Shirley Curtsey, Ruth Kornblum, Jeffrey Levins, Dr. Jack Markow, Ann Ford McMillan, Daniel Mendelson, Mildred Sylvia Morris, Byron Price, Sylvia Zive Pulver, Bessie Rosen, 
Patrice Arnstein Rosen, Edward Russ, Arthur Schifrin, Lenore Silverman, Yuzia Sirota, June Sloan Siegel, Sylvia Stabiner, Sandra Sterling, Marion Levin Stone, Frank Topler, Sonia Ullman, Morton Wax, Murray Weber and Dorothy Weber, Abraham M. Welch, Henry Wouters, Gerald Zeidman, and Lowell Zemnick. On page 598, we rise as one community to honor their blessing and their memory as we recite Kadisha Tom. Amen. We may be seated. Especially at this restorative justice conference, there was so much talk about how we love each other, how we build our world through love. And especially when we are torn apart from the inside out, we are reminded that we will build this world from love. And you must build this world from love. And if we build this world from love, then God will build this world from love. These are the lyrics of, of our closing song, Olam Chesed Ibane. Literally, I, we will build this world from love. world from love. Let's go back to the Hebrew. Let our, let our Shabbat of love remind us to continue to build this world of love. And may we all have a Shabbat of peace, of love, of shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.